The propulsion system is an R, uh, a gravity propulsion system. The power source is an antimatter reactor. Ah, uh, this technology does not exist at all in the annals of ufology. Few names command as much interest and controversy as Bob Lazar. For decades, his mysterious revelations about Area 51 and reverse-engineered extraterrestrial technology have fueled speculation and doubt in equal measure. But recently, a new chapter unfolds, and now Bob Lazar, the mysterious figure at the heart of it all, has emerged from the shadows to offer his insights. What does Bob Lazar know that we don't, and perhaps more crucially, why has he chosen this moment to break his silence? Join us as we delve deep into the unusual world of Bob Lazar and the recent UFO sightings that have captivated the world. In the late 1980s, a man named Bob Lazar appeared out of nowhere, catching everyone's attention with his astonishing story. He claimed to have worked at a top-secret government facility called S-4, located near the famous Area 51 in Nevada. According to Lazar, his job involved studying and trying to understand technology from outer space. His story was truly remarkable. He spoke of nine different alien spacecraft, each with its unique design and capabilities. One particularly interesting craft, which he dubbed the Sport Model, was powered by a special reactor fueled by a mysterious element, Element 115. Lazar insisted that this element had incredible properties like creating antigravity effects, enabling the spacecraft to perform procedures that seemed impossible based on our current understanding of physics. Lazar revealed how the work at S-4 was highly secretive, with different teams assigned to specific tasks, keeping their research separated from one another. This strict arrangement was intended to maintain utmost secrecy, making it challenging for anyone to grasp the full scope of the operations at the facility. His stories gave a sense of order and specific details that were often lacking in tales of UFO sightings. He wasn't just someone who said he'd seen UFOs, he claimed to have worked on them. He shared technical information, specific places where events occurred, and even a timeline. His disclosures tapped into a growing public desire for openness about what many believed were long-held government secrets regarding encounters with extraterrestrial beings. But along with excitement, Lazar's claims sparked a wave of doubt. Critics quickly pointed out inconsistencies, questioning everything from his education to the existence of the places he mentioned. The physics community, in particular, raised doubts about the idea of using Element 115 as fuel for travel between stars, considering it nearly impossible based on what was known about the element at the time. Yet, despite the doubt, his impact was significant. He breathed new life into discussions about UFOs, introducing new terms and energy into the conversation. Suddenly, people were talking about Area 51 and Element 115, concepts even those not deeply involved in the topic could grasp. Before Lazar, Area 51 was a mysterious military base known to few. After him, it became intertwined with stories of aliens and became a magnet for the curious, journalists and UFO enthusiasts, all hoping for a glimpse of the extraordinary. Moreover, his act of blowing the whistle was seen by many as an act of bravery, casting him as a defender of truth. He risked his safety to uncover information that could have changed the world. This portrayal of a lone figure challenging a powerful entity like the government resonated deeply with those who had become doubtful of official accounts. Over time, his narrative was analyzed, discussed, and sometimes criticized, but its influence was undeniable. It paved the way for numerous others to step forward with their own stories of hidden government projects and encounters with the mysterious. The realm of UFO discussion underwent a profound shift, moving beyond mere rumors and grainy photos to have a clear voice, largely embodied by Bob Lazar. His revelations about S-4 and Element 115, situated near Groom Lake in Nevada, transformed the landscape of conversation. According to Lazar, S-4, nestled beside the more famous Area 51, was a hub for top-secret operations involving extraterrestrial technology. His depictions of S-4 painted a picture of a facility shrouded in secrecy, where scientific exploration intertwined with the imperative of preserving classified information. In his story, S-4 held an interesting secret, nine different flying sources, each with its unique design and functions. These weren't just decorations or tucked away for safekeeping, he insisted they were fully operational. He vividly described how they were cleverly concealed within hangar bays, nestled into the mountainside, 
keeping them hidden from curious onlookers below and even from aerial surveillance. If his claims were true, it hinted at something much more than mere study. It suggested that whoever controlled Esfa had intentions beyond just figuring out how these crafts worked, they might have been considering testing and even using them. But among all the astonishing details about S4, perhaps the most captivating was the mention of Element 115 entering the UFO discussions. According to him, this mysterious element was crucial for powering the propulsion systems of these otherworldly crafts. He argued that once properly utilized, Element 115 could generate a gravitational field which the sources used for propulsion. This, he proposed, explained how these crafts managed their mind-boggling maneuvers, defying what we understand about physics. He explained that Element 115 wasn't something found naturally on Earth. Instead, it was provided to the facility in batches for their experiments. He described it as being used in a reactor within the spacecraft to create a gravity wave. This wave was then enhanced for propulsion, allowing the sources to soar with incredible speed and agility, challenging the limits of our understanding of flight. The fascinating part about this was that the spaceship didn't move like typical vehicles do. Instead of using engines to push itself forward, it somehow manipulated gravity to bring its destination closer to it. This completely changed how we think about movement. Conversations about S4 and Element 115 weren't confined to just UFO enthusiasts and conspiracy theorists, they spread widely into mainstream culture and scientific circles. Lazar's detailed account sparked a mix of curiosity and doubt. For some, S4 seemed like a fortress of hidden knowledge where humanity's greatest secrets were uncovered. Others viewed it as pure fiction, a story made up of half-truths and imagination. Lazar's claims had enormous implications. If they were true, it meant that the US government or some covert group within it possessed technology far beyond our current understanding. It suggested that humans weren't alone in the universe, and that their governments had physical evidence of contact with beings from other worlds. However, the specifics of Lazar's story, the properties of Element 115, and how S4 operated were hotly debated. For every person who believed fervently in Lazar's account, there was another who dismissed it as a fabrication. Regardless of where one stood in this debate, the tales of S4 and Element 115 added new layers to discussions about extraterrestrial life and advanced technology. They raised questions not only about what might exist beyond Earth, but also about the lengths to which earthly powers might go to conceal such discoveries. His story, woven with the mysterious S4 and the puzzling Element 115, marked the dawn of a fresh era filled with curiosity, optimism, and doubt in the quest for understanding extraterrestrial realities. Every revelation, especially of the magnitude brought forth by Bob Lazar, inevitably beckoned scrutiny. The bolder the claim, the more rigorous the investigation it faces. Lazar's assertions regarding S-4, alien spacecraft, and Element 115 were no exception. Over time, numerous criticisms and counterclaims arose, questioning the truthfulness of Lazar's narrative. One of the primary criticisms focused on Lazar's background. When researchers and journalists sought to confirm Lazar's educational credentials, discrepancies emerged. Lazar purported to have studied at both the Massachusetts Institute of Technology and the California Institute of Technology, yet no records of his attendance could be located at either institution. Some of Lazar's supporters suggested that his records might have been tampered with or erased to discredit him, adding fuel to the narrative of a grand cover up. However, doubters argued that completely erasing all traces of someone's educational history, including memories of classmates and professors, would be highly improbable. Another significant point of contention was the existence of S for itself. While Area 51 is widely acknowledged as a real and active military installation, concrete evidence supporting the existence of S4, as described by Lazar, has yet to be produced. The debate surrounding his claims continues to spark interest and doubt driving further exploration and inquiry into the realms of extraterrestrial possibilities. Some people suggested that the particular natural isotope Lazar mentioned hadn't been found yet or was being kept secret. They argued that our knowledge of elements and isotopes is always changing. What seems unlikely now might become widely accepted in the future. Many found it significant that Lazar risked his reputation and career by coming forward. They believed nobody would willingly face such scrutiny and criticism unless they truly believed in what they were saying. 
the debate over Bob Lazar's claims mirrors the larger conversation about UFOs and alien life. On one side, doubters demand solid evidence and facts. On the other, believers rely on a mix of evidence, intuition, and a strong feeling that we're not alone in the universe. In between are those open to possibilities, waiting for undeniable proof. His story, with its convincing details and confusing contradictions, will likely remain a point of contention in UFO history. The battle between his critics and supporters reflects our human desire for answers, and the lengths they'll go to validate or disprove a narrative that challenges our understanding of reality. In today's fast-paced media landscape, where information spreads rapidly and narratives can change with every social media post or TV show, this debate takes on even more significance. The media played a huge role in bringing Bob Lazar's story to the forefront of global attention. His tales of UFOs and secretive government facilities were already captivating, but it was the media that brought them into mainstream conversations. Lazar's initial appearance in the public eye was thanks to investigative journalist George Knapp, a well-respected figure in journalism known for his thoroughness. Knapp gave his claims credibility. Their televised interviews were crucial in giving his story a wider platform. Knapp's probing questions and Lazar's straightforward responses made their dynamic both interesting and understandable for regular viewers. Television, with its blend of sound, imagery, and storytelling, was the perfect medium to explore his mysterious accounts. From amateur detectives to UFO enthusiasts, everyone could share their thoughts and findings leading to a collective exploration of ideas without limitations of location or institutional boundaries. This collaboration often uncovered details overlooked by traditional media. Without media attention, his story might have remained obscure, known only within a small community. Instead, it became a global sensation, sparking curiosity and debates, and inspiring a new generation to ponder the possibility of extraterrestrial life. The media's role in the Bob Lazar narrative highlights its power to shape our collective consciousness. It demonstrates how storytelling, amplified by technology and shared globally, can profoundly influence our understanding of reality, our beliefs, and our connection to the universe. In the world of science, where careful investigation based on solid evidence is the norm, there's often a clash with ideas that venture into the realm of speculation or cannot be verified. Bob Lazar's claims, especially those concerning Element 115 and its supposed capabilities, have drawn significant attention and doubts from the scientific community. Element 115, according to Lazar, played a central role in his story. He suggested that this element served as the foundation for the propulsion systems of extraterrestrial spacecraft he purportedly worked on. Lazar proposed that when utilized correctly, Element 115 could create a gravitational field enabling spacecraft to manipulate spacetime and achieve travel between stars. However, when scientists began to scrutinize these assertions, they encountered numerous challenges. Firstly, there was the question of whether Element 115 even existed at the time of his initial claims. It wasn't until 2003 that scientists created a synthetic version of Element 115, which they named Muscovium. The properties of this synthesized element didn't align with his descriptions. Instead of being a stable substance, Muscovium displayed extreme instability with a half-life lasting mere millisecond before decaying into other elements. This instability made it highly unlikely to serve as a reliable energy source, let alone power interstellar spacecraft. While his claims may have captured the imagination, they faced significant challenges under scientific scrutiny. The clash between speculative ideas and rigorous scientific inquiry highlights the complex and often contentious nature of exploring the unknown. Moreover, Lazar's depiction of element 115's ability to control gravity has intrigued the physics community. Gravity, one of nature's fundamental forces, has proven incredibly challenging to manipulate. Despite extensive research efforts, our comprehension of gravity remains limited and the idea that an external substance like element 115 could influence or generate gravitational fields challenges, established scientific understanding. It's important to recognize that science, by its very nature, remains receptive to discoveries. Throughout history, many once dismissed theories or ideas have gained validation through subsequent research. However, the burden of proof always lies with the claimant. 
For Lazar's assertions to be taken seriously within the scientific community, they must be supported by empirical evidence, reproducible experiments, or verifiable observations. Without such corroboration, his accounts of element 115's extraordinary properties remain anecdotal. Critics have also pointed out the absence of peer-reviewed publications or collaborative verification related to his claims. Science thrives on collaboration, debate, and peer review. Groundbreaking discoveries or theories undergo scrutiny by experts and rigorous examination before they are accepted. His circumvention of these standard protocols further raises doubts about the accuracy of his statements. Despite this doubt, the allure of his narrative is undeniable. Many hope fervently for his revelations to be true. However, until supported by credible evidence and subjected to thorough scientific scrutiny, his claims remain speculative. The link between belief and scientific acceptance relies on solid evidence. Currently, that link isn't fully established. The captivating story of element 115 and its extraordinary traits awaits validation or dismissal, through rigorous scientific investigation, not just through stories or claims. Whenever there are hints of state secrets, classified projects, or hidden activities, people naturally look to the government for answers. Bob Lazar's bold claims about secret military facilities and advanced technology prompted intense scrutiny. The responses, both official and unofficial, from various government bodies provide insight into the complex interplay of politics, secrecy, and the pursuit of truth. Initially, the government remained conspicuously silent about his allegations. This silence only fueled speculation among believers who saw it as evidence of a deeper conspiracy, or an implicit acknowledgement of his credibility. However, doubters interpreted the silence differently, viewing it as the government's refusal to engage with baseless claims. The first hints of an official position emerged indirectly when inquiries were made about his supposed employment at Area 51, or the secretive S for facility. No records corroborated his claims and prestigious institutions like MIT and Caltech denied his alleged academic credentials. For some, these denials reinforced the idea of a cover-up, suggesting that his records were intentionally erased. For others, it cast doubt on the truthfulness of his entire story. As the Lazar saga unfolded further, the government's reactions became more direct and noticeable. The U.S. Air Force, responsible for the Nevada Test and Training Range housing Area 51, had always kept a tight lid on the activities there. Despite his claims, they remained steadfast in their stance, insisting that any discussions regarding Area 51's operations were classified and not meant for public consumption. This official position, while expected, only served to fuel speculation even more. Unofficial responses, often shared candidly and sometimes off the record, offered a slightly different viewpoint. Some former employees and contractors associated with Area 51, without directly confirming Lazar's assertions, hinted at the existence of highly secretive and advanced projects within the facility. Their accounts hinted at a culture of extreme secrecy and compartmentalization, where even those working within the site might not have full knowledge of all ongoing projects. A significant moment arrived when, after years of avoiding the topic, the CIA formally acknowledged the existence of Area 51 in 2013. While this acknowledgement was not necessarily prompted by his claims, it was found within a declassified report on the U-2 spy plane program. However, this recognition did not lend any credence to claims of extraterrestrial technologies. Rather, it simply confirmed the base's role in testing reconnaissance aircraft. Amidst a maze of responses ranging from denials to acknowledgments and deliberate silences, a clear and comprehensive understanding of the situation at Area 51 remains elusive. His assertions swing back and forth between what could be true and what might not be, sparking both curiosity and doubt. The reactions from the authorities add layers of mystery to the story. Whether they're seen as following standard procedures, intentionally clouding the truth, or honestly revealing information. These responses highlight the complex dance between government secrecy, public interest, and the pursuit of truth. In a time filled with secrets, for Lazar, stepping forward with claims that challenge the established stories, especially when they involve matters of national security, comes with significant personal consequences. His decision to share his experiences at Area 51, 
and beyond serves as a powerful example of the challenges whistleblowers face in a world doubtful of their revelations. Filled with interest and potential hazards, soon after his identity became public, he found himself under intense scrutiny, with the world watching his every move. Every aspect of his life, from his education and career to his personal life and finances, came under the microscope. After Lazar's groundbreaking revelations, his financial situation mirrored the ups and downs of his life. The psychological toll of being in the eye of such a storm shouldn't be underestimated. Despite appearing calm and collected in public, one can only imagine the inner turmoil he endured. Moments of doubt, second-guessing, and the weight of defending a narrative under constant scrutiny. His journey post-revelation also saw him gradually withdrawing from the public eye. Initially flooded with interviews and appearances, he became increasingly reclusive. Though never backing down from his claims, instead of engaging in constant debate, he chose a quieter life away from the relentless attention of believers and skeptics alike. Bob Lazar's story isn't just about his claims regarding Area 51 and extraterrestrial technology. It's a compelling tale of resilience, adaptation, and the human quest for truth and understanding in a world often filled with doubt and uncertainty. What are your thoughts on Bob Lazar's claim on recent UFO sightings? Let us have your opinions in the comments below. Thanks for watching another episode of SPAC underscore Savants.